Hi, everyone. Welcome to Genetically Speaking, my YouTube channel. I speak about adoption, foster care, and mental health as it relates to adoption and foster care. So today we have a special guest. It is National Adoption Awareness Month. And as an adoptee, I always want to bring awareness to the issues and challenges that we endure through our lifelong process of having been adopted. So today we have Sarah Rudd with us and she's 24 years old and was adopted at birth by two incredible people. She began her journey to find her biological parents at the age of 21. And she was able to get in contact with both of them. Uh, she has not yet been in reunion with her biological mother, but has been in reunion with her biological father. Sarah struggled with being an adoptee for much of her life, and she handled that struggle by becoming involved with the performing arts. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Of course. You're a special adoptee to Celia Center. Thank you. <laughs> and you love been... being a part of Celia Center. It oh. really has helped me get through all my struggles that I go through with being an adoptee. So let's jump into your story. So I was adopted at birth. I've always known I was adopted. My parents never kept that secret from me, which really helped me growing up. I did struggle with being an adoptee growing up, but it wasn't a secret or a lie. When I was 18, I decided to go through all my paperwork and looked at who my birth mom was. It said my birth dad had no name. They didn't know. It was a one stand type of situation. He lived in a different country. Nobody knew anything about him. So I didn't feel I was completely ready at 18 to start my journey. So I waited till I was 21. But I realized that you're never fully ready to find, go through your journey. Um, I did find my birth mom through Facebook when I was 21. It was only took about a week or two to be able to find her, which was crazy. Mm -hmm. um, within 15 minutes, she did respond back to me and say, yes, it's me. And that to me was crazy. Like that was something that I never imagined could have happened. We talked for about two to three days. We had a really good conversation and it kind of went south from there. We no longer have a relationship, nor do we have our reunion. Yeah. I do not have any contact with her at this time. I'm hoping that changes in the future. So after that situation kind of occurred, I decided to forego that. And as I didn't know who my birth father was, I decided to go and find the rest of my birth mom's family. And I found my a couple of my aunts and my uncles, and I am in reunion with them. I actually saw one of my uncles last week, which was great seeing him. And we had a great time. We had dinner together. But I still had that feeling like I needed to find who my birth father was. And it took about two years to be able to figure out exactly who he was. We contacted people in the different countries trying to figure out who he was. I did ancestry as well as um, 23andMe. And I had a second cousin pop up on my ancestry. And somehow after two years of being in contact, we finally figured out who my birth father was. And he gave me his number. I get a text from him saying, would you please call me? And I called him and he says, I think I'm your birth father. Um, he did have a relationship with my birth mom. My whole adoption paperwork was a lie. It was frustrating and irritating on both of our sides. And it was just unfair altogether. It was just totally unfair to him and his family because they didn't know about me. And we had a great relationship and we still are in contact with each other and going through a reunion. And it's been a crazy journey. It's hard. It definitely is hard. What do you think it could be? Understanding the birth mother's side, her point of view. What do you think she could be going through? Um, I think that she was also, she could be scared. Her family didn't know anything about me. So it was a total surprise just jumping back into the picture for her. And I don't think she got the support that she needed to know about reunion. My parents were told that it was going to be a semi-open adoption as that's what she wanted. But when I spoke to her, I know seeing me really affected her. She even made that comment to me, seeing pictures of me, seeing, being able to hear my voice. It was hard for her to do that stuff. Mm -hmm. And she told me the first minute that we talked, she said, there hasn't been a day that goes by that I don't think about you. Um, I, I love you. I always have loved you from the minute I got pregnant with you. So mm -hmm. I don't think that she doesn't 
necessarily want a reunion. I think things are holding her back. I can't really say exactly what that is, but I do know that there, that there is or was a tug and a pull type of situation, especially when we first were in contact. I am a big advocate. Birth parents do need more education and support yes. in adoption. They usually are overlooked and not acknowledged in our society. A big part of National Adoption Awareness Month is bringing attention to the disenfranchised grief that birth parents go through when they relinquish, surrender a child that will have lifelong impact psychologically and emotionally. And they do need mental health support because they are grieving the loss of a baby, their baby, that they couldn't parent for whatever the circumstance was in her life. As painful it is for her, it has been painful for you. How have you dealt with this pain? Last year, my really good friend and I wrote a song about my adoption, trying to figure out the questions that I have to her. I was, you know, wondering um, what it was like, what what it felt like to have a child and that child be taken away from you. Um, I could never imagine going through that pain. And I was wondering what pain she was going through. And I can't ask her these questions. And we turned it into a music video last year. Speaking of my music video, the music and writing music and listening to music because it just helps me relax a little bit and get it all, get through it all. We do have a treat. Can we share your video? With yes, our absolutely. Listeners? I'd love that. <laughs> What were you thinking that day? Did you look in my eyes or look away? Did you hold me tight? Did you tell me I looked pretty? Did you tell me I'd grow up to do amazing things? It's all questions I have, but you won't answer me. No, you won't answer me. It's all questions I have, but you won't answer me. No, you won't answer me. Do you think of me? Do you remember that day like it was yesterday? Did you have second thoughts to keep me or not? Did you ever on a cold and lonely day It's all questions I have But you won't answer me No, you won't answer me It's all questions I have But you won't answer me No, you won't answer me In spite of you questions I have, but you won't answer me. No, you won't answer me. It's all questions I have, but you won't answer me. You won't answer me. That is an amazing video. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. So I've seen it like a handful of times now, and each time I get, oh, you always feel a little grief and loss when you watch it. Yeah, definitely. I think hearing my lyrics, rehearing them again and again, it it's hard, but at the same time, it feels like I'm so happy I can get this out there because I want the world to know that adoptees don't always have a happy ending. We see these movies, we see these TV shows, we see TikTok, we see Instagram, you know, all this social media nowadays, we always see these happy endings. 
But in reality, they're not. They're not always as happy as they look. Adoptees go through so much. We go through adoption trauma, whether we had a good adoption or had an adoption that was terrible. Someone brought up that why do adoptees, if they had a good adoption, be in support groups? And I will be happy to say that I'm a part of a support group. It's not that I had need to be part of it because I had a didn't have a good upbringing, but I still went through that adoption trauma. I still am on this journey to find my birth parents, just like everyone else. I have that pain and my pain cannot be taken away by someone else because they feel that since I had a good adoption, I shouldn't be able to be part of these support groups. We hear stories that are have these good adoptions, but in the end, it's depression and anxiety and stress and it's everything taking over our body that we never felt and I've kept stuff hidden I mean I recently just told my parents about things that happened in middle school and or even in elementary school when I was told that my real mom never loved me and that's why I was adopted and stuff like that it affects us more than people know and there's sayings for adoptees that you never want to say to an adoptee, like you should be grateful or are you lucky or do you feel lucky? And I can't stand when people say those because I may be grateful, but I'm, it's hard to explain at the same time. I'm definitely thankful. I'm definitely thankful that I have the parents I have and my birth mom chose my parents. She actually picked my parents to be my parents, which I don't really like saying the word picked either, but you know, we still have that feeling of rejection, just like any other adoptee. We have we are rejected at birth. What is a baby supposed to tell themselves? What is a toddler supposed to tell themselves? If they don't have a story, guess what? It's gonna they're it's gonna be Velcro for a negative experience. We're going to look at the worst case scenario unless we're told the reasons why our birth mother or first mother made this choice at that time. That wasn't about not wanting you, but she couldn't keep you. However, we are egocentric, which means we do take things personally as children. We feel like the world revolves around us. We need our mothers. So it would have been really nice for you to have an open adoption like it was planned. But again, open adoption, people need a lot of education. I do have an open adoption video on my YouTube channel for parents who are watching how to do a successful open adoption because it's possible. What do you think in your point of view? Do you feel that that would have helped you to know her growing up? Absolutely. Absolutely. If my birth mom was a part of my life, whether I lived with her or not, I feel that just having her in the picture somehow or her being able to receive the pictures that she asked for. I mean, she asked our attorney who I have had contact with, um, who I've been talking with and as well as the social worker. Um, My birth mom requested pictures of me and every year my parents would send her well, to the attorney would send her pictures and she never picked up those pictures. But if she picked them up, I feel that even that small little, even if it's just a picture, she'd still somehow be a part of my life, be understand who I am and understand why I want her in my life. Why? You know, we still want that. We still want that connection with them, whether we search for them or we don't. I feel that at least in my opinion, that most of the time we, no matter what we want them, we want them to be in our life. So are you using the creative arts? Are you writing anything new? Are you performing? What are you up to? Um, I am hopefully soon going to be in the process of writing my next song. So I'm hoping definitely to get songs out there. Pretty soon. <laughs> awesome. So how can we follow you, see you, continue to keep in touch with you? Um, my Instagram is at Sarah, S-A-R-A-H underscore Rudd, R-U-D-D, or even following my YouTube channel. Um, I should, once I finish my songs, I will definitely upload them there. You're amazing. So keep Aww. up the good work and stay adoptee strong. Definitely. Thank you so much. What a in my eyes or look away did you hold me tight did you tell me i looked pretty did you tell me i'd grow up to do amazing things it 
it's all questions I have, but you won't answer me. No, you won't answer me. It's all questions I have, but you won't answer me. No, you won't answer me. Do.